I'll say a couple of things. And the first one I'll start with is my own life experiences so that you can learn from them as well. I'm a religious person. So forgive me if one of my examples sounds religious. Am I forgiven? You better forgive me. <laughs> first, I think the first tip I'll give you, and it has already been said, is relationship. I try. Mark my word. What did I say? To have a good relationship with God, I try. But I'm not good. But I try. But I regard that relationship as the most important I have. There are a lot of things that has happened to me that I'm undeserving of. But God, in his infinite mercy and grace, has made me the product that I am today. And it will also make you a better product than I am. Amen? Amen. Excellent. I lost my father when I was six years old. So my mother had to raise six of us. No, five of us. And I was second to the last. And you know, in a traditional society like ours, you know what it is for a woman to be widowed? <laughs> Every man comes after her. And then society is also not very kind to her. But my mother made a vow. She said, all of my children must be graduates. Today, we are all graduates. The relationship with my mother is fundamental because if she chose not to have given me an education, I won't be standing here to give you TEDx talk. So I regard that as very fundamental. The only pain I have is my, my mother suffers from dementia. She's 85 years old. So today, she doesn't probably know the man or the child that she has made a man of. So if you are like me and you are in this hall, you believe in grace and in God, please help me stand up to appreciate God. Thank you very much for standing up. Now, I was talking about the Uber and the Bull you guys come to school with. And in my days, it was bicycle and our foot. Now, it's among the top 10 percentile in terms of school fees, payments in Nigeria. But your parents have made the sacrifices to send you to this school despite everything, giving you a head start in life. You are not entitled. That's the first thing you need to get rid of. You are not what? You are not what? You are not. And your parents have spent time, hard work, building that family fortune and name that you are standing on. So today, please help me give a rounding sound, round of applause to your parents. <laughs> please be seated. The other thing I'll just talk about, and so relationship, as you go out there, like Rick and I have said, you're going to find it fundamental. And don't just make relationship with the high and mighty. Make it with the cleaners. Make it with the office driver. Make it with the people that you might think are not relevant. One day in your career, you will understand that everybody could be a destiny helper to you if you keen to them properly. The second point I'd like to make very, very quickly is around knowing yourself. Three, four speakers have said that already, but I want to reinforce it. You must be comfortable in yourself if you want to succeed. There's no other way to success. 
If you are an introvert, be comfortable in yourself. If you are an extrovert, be comfortable with yourself. If you are a stammerer, be... If you have a limp on your leg, be... The only thing is that always strive to be a better version of yourself. Don't accept mediocrity. And don't let anyone put you down for who you are. Because there can never, in this universe, be a second you. I thought you would clap for yourself. You are a unique machine, created like no other. So don't put yourself down, but you need to know what you like. You need to know what motivates you. You need to know what inspires you. You need to seek mentors that will help you fulfill your dream, like Diary have said. The third point I'm learning from my life is that you must be a person that delivers value. You must be a person that delivers value. And value doesn't mean you have to climb Mount Everest to show yourself. Or you have to be a guru in IT, or be like my good friend here, Diary, creating different businesses. It could be the simple thing. Simple thing like, now I'll give an example of the driver in our office. He's the first person to come to the office. He's the last person to leave. And before he does that, guess what? He will switch off the office light. He will switch off the air conditioners. He's the one that checks that our office doors are locked or opened. That's a value. I'm very bad with dates, anniversaries, things like that that celebrates people. Very bad with it. But I have a colleague that whenever it's somebody's birthday, boss, this person's birthday, that person made partner at PWC, that person, has, you know, she keeps reminding me. Now, because I'm bad with those sort of things, I remember and it's value add to me. So in your homes, in your place of work, in your relationships, you have to be a giver of? A giver of? A giver of? You must be. Otherwise, you'll be forgotten so too quickly. Who wants to be forgotten here? Raise up your hand. Nobody. You have to identify your value proposition. Yeah? Now, I've been conducting interviews in the last three months, trying to fill six vacancies. Six, just six. You know what I found out about most candidates? You have to talk to me. I'm not a radio. <laughs> Am I a radio? <laughs> eh, you have to respond. So talk to me. Do you, can you tell me what I found out most about candidates? Bonus question. For a round of applause from me. <laughs> tell me. Sorry? They don't, they don't rely on their CV. They lie on their CV. Okay, that's one. Any other takers? Oga, I bet put on that clock. Oh. They tell me what I want to hear. Okay. You know what I find out? Which is my fourth tip to you. You must prepare and practice if you want to succeed in anything. Diary at Alade. He's not successful because he's the most gifted. Yeah, talent is there. Dare did not succeed in his IT because he did not fail. He failed twice. He said it here. What do you think is making him succeed now? He's preparing. Let me be honest with you. When I was invited here, I had to read about Dr. Fausad. I read about Jonathan, Dr. Uh, Professor Dilip, about Nile University, how he started and everything. 
Because I need to understand my audience. You need to prepare. Candidates don't prepare for interviews. They think they can wing it. That waiting, <laughs> not be me again, superstar like me. You know, you remember Rekia's uh, superwoman's cape, right? That's how most candidates come to interviews. We ask them simple questions. Tell us about this organization that you've applied to. Well, you know, how far? You know, they just dance around it. Some candidates will outrightly refuse to answer your question and ask them the question and decide to, <laughs> and decide to give you the answer. But you are not going to be like that, are you? You must and practice. To practice, just stay in the front of a mirror and check yourself. How am I doing? Practice your speech. That makes you stronger. That is for the guys here who know about football. That's the difference between the superstars and the mediocres. You agree? Fantastic. Now, I've almost forgotten my fifth point, but I wrote it down because I, I because I, fantastic. Now, <laughs> my fifth point is, B, learn from every experience that happens to you in life. Everyone. I told you my mom, my father died when I was six. Yeah? There was a point in my life we didn't know where our next meal was going to come from. And when I say our next meal, I mean if we had breakfast, we were not sure of lunch or dinner. But your parents have taken care of all of that. But that experience has taught me a lot. It has taught me that if I can still be here, then there must be a higher being that's taking care of me because I'm not deserving. Number one. One of my worst critic is my previous boss. He makes a mess of me. When I say he makes a mess of me, <laughs> in open for a lady, it calls me Isibo. My first name is Tom. My surname is Isibo. He would say, Isibo, come here, stand here. See in trouser, you know I am now. See in slide, nonsense. See his shoe self. You know, I had to wear this shoe specially because I know where I was coming from. It's part of the preparation and part of my learning. Yeah? Now, um, Isibo, come here. He gave me the biggest, worst embarrassments of my life. But guess what? I said, this man, I will follow you. Because he didn't do it in a manner that was pleasant, but I was learning. Today, <laughs> guys, trust me, there's no way, there's no board I can face. There's no intelligent, there's no, nothing I will stand. Only me. I go for a meeting with government and self. Nothing they happen. <laughs> because I took time to learn. And I know learning comes with pain and it comes with pleasure sometimes. But I took the pain. And I'm still learning. While I was, when I met Rukia for the first time today, I told her, I want to, my new area of learning is ESD, ESG, and no, I'm the speaker now. <laughs> I've given myself two extra minutes. So, <laughs> so about some wrap up. I told her I want exposure in ESG and in sustainability. Millie, I saw her card that I'm looking for you. You cannot stop learning. When you stop learning, you become a dinosaur. And we all know what happens to dinosaurs. They what? They are just extinct. They are out. Now, to wrap up and leave the stage, I'll leave you with a tip that has never failed me. One, in whatever you do, even if I can't remember any other thing I've said, remember this. Be humble. Humility. It opens doors you will never think is possible to open. People will want to help you. 
They won't come to you. Ah, what is the issue? You are not looking happy today because you are humble. Humility does not mean you're not confident. In the inverse, even mean you're very confident because it takes confidence to be humble. The first thing I see when I see proud people is that they're probably empty, they don't have content, or they don't have anything to share. But if you are truly filled with content, be humble. It opens extraordinary doors. And then build content and build character. Thank you for listening. God bless you.